Hey you! Don't watch that! Watch this! This is the heavy, heavy monster sound! The nuts is so Okay guys, so this is the whole entire thing that is out of the bag. Uh, currently right now, we will start building the chests. So now we will start uh, building everything. So we will see bag by bag as well. And then we will start doing the setup for the customer. So the first thing we have to go is definitely bag one until bag two. So I will set this right here. Uh, all electronic sites, let's put it to, uh, to the sites as well. You know what we don't need to use we'll put it at the side maybe we need to use this definitely but we put everything at the side here so it's much more easier to uh, assemble so uh, i always like to put the instruction manual right in front and then uh, where the chassis is the chassis will be right here so oh my god there's so many items <laughs> All right, so the stickers, let's put it all the way to the back, guys. So stickers is not recommended right now. And then we will start building it. And uh, we'll put an arrangement. All right, guys, so we will start uh, arranging the bags, which one we don't need it. We will all put it aside um, before even installing it. So we'll put everything into a side, all right? For bag three, we put it aside. Bag four, we still put it aside. Bag two, we need it, and bag one. So the rest will go away, and we will start assembly the diff. So, like I said, guys, a pair of scissors is really recommended instead of using a blade. Uh, if you guys are using blades, it will be slightly difficult. So, okay. So I've cut it from the sides, slide it out, just like so. The back plastic, I will put it back inside a box for the customer. The oil is, the gear oil is 5,000 recommended. So we'll put the gear oil uh, just as the box wanted it to be. And then we'll open up uh, the other goody parts as well. So this is a very built, uh, what do you call it, built. Uh, cheap built uh, chassis screw it in a T section straight all right so from here tighten it up okay and tighten the other side as well something like the gear will Cut your hand so you have to do it fully like so. Okay. So both screws are already in. Next, alright. So that's the click that you want, and then put it aside. So for gears, we have already done the gears. Next, we gotta do is cover up the oil, and then we have to open the bag for number two. So bag number two comes in uh, rear lower arm, front lower arm, and all that good stuff. Chassis. All right, guys. This is my opinion, uh, guys. This is my opinion. All right. I'm not being um, biased, but look at the quality. All right. Let's see if you guys can see the quality. Let me show you with the light. Okay. Let me see if I can zoom in. Right. Let me see. Okay, guys. So if you guys can see the the light here, look, there is uh, some imperfections. Um, this is one thing that I I I, I don't really recommend. So uh, if you guys can see, this is the fiberglass uh, chassis. So the fiberglass chassis itself is uh, very normal. Um, you can see there is. The finishes, some touches finishes is not uh, very, uh, very, very perfect. Uh, but it's okay. It's still not like very, very bad. It still looks uh, very decent. But at the same time, it's not fully, fully uh, like perfect. As you guys can see here, I don't know if you guys can see, but let me let me try to zoom in a little bit more. 
Let me see if I can do so. All right. Okay. So let me see. I can try and zoom out. Okay. So you guys can see there is some imperfections right at the the deck. So we cannot do anything about it. But you don't have any imperfections on the side. That's that sometimes decks are like this. Uh, even if you see any brands as well, some some decks are like this. That's why Refty really really take care of their decks. That's why they put in the sleeve. Uh, but one thing that Sakura did and make the extra mile is to put the sleeves, uh, the deck inside the plastic to protect it. For Yokomo, uh, when the last time you open the chest is, it's going to be up front, just like so. Uh, and uh, it's at the bottom, it's way at the bottom. And then, you know, um, sometimes it's part shiny, sometimes it's not. Alright guys, so I basically got how it is. Uh, it's a little bit confusing guys. It's it's so sometimes it's a little bit confusing. I don't know why because it's the instruction should actually divide to two. This is my suggestion towards uh, Sakura. So now there is two good news. One, we already installed the front lower arm, and then the remote has already arrived. The gyro V4 also have already arrived. Uh, so far, smooth. Um, there is some play. Uh, within it so you can add uh, a couple of uh, spaces inside so you can remove that um, free play so that is on another thing so now we'll go back into um, the arm uh, for the rear arm the rear arm itself so the rear arm is also the same and then they are actually using just let's see if we can zoom uh, they're using these two pins and they're just locking one mechanism here. I think it's okay, uh, but I prefer to lock it both ways, it's much more better. But uh, we'll install this right now and then I'll show you guys how is the installation process is like. Okay guys, so we have finally done the front uh, steering. Uh, so far, front steering, uh, not much issue, uh, but it's okay, uh, it's a little bit weird with their system of their steering, but this is a process that I learned, uh, pretty okay, uh, both sides is, and rear is okay, so now we're gonna install uh, the, already install the front, we're gonna install the rear part, and then basically enter all the gears, and basically we can start uh, I think we can start you know doing fully all the other items as well so I've actually differentiate each part uh, on the screw sides here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it aside I think uh, after this I'll be using my own tools I won't be using the Sakura tools because uh, you know this is a customer's request for me to do uh, and uh, he wanted to uh, you know he wanted me to tune his car so I'm gonna help him install the car I'm gonna help him uh, using back my tools so he can keep his tools for the Sakura one okay guys so uh, the back gear is like this uh, basically it's just <laughs> uh, a gear system uh, it's a little bit confusing when you want to install the rear uh, because the instruction is not as precise as it's supposed to be uh, I do still have some confusion I cannot lie this to you guys because if it's a truth I have to tell you guys the truth okay guys so we've already installed uh, this uh, rear uh, back part uh, it looks uh, pretty subtle uh, alright uh, just the uh, some component parts that you actually have to mix and match uh, Like this is a 14, right? Right here is a 14, this one This is a, if I'm not mistaken, this is the 15 or either the 13 one Wait, let me check um, Okay, so uh, so this is the 13th one, the most inner one is the 13th one, the most inner side uh, that is 
this part is the 13 and then this is 14 and 14 so both here is 14 only the inside here is 13 and uh, the screw is facing outwards so I'm just gonna quickly update you guys what's going on here so we have already done the front part already uh, from here towards the end so this is all basically done uh, what you guys can see is I add the spacer right in front right up right up here so the servo can actually sit on and then we screw the back as well so next we're gonna mount this uh, for the rear we're gonna mount it and then basically let me show you mount it here for the shock tower and then basically we are done with this and then we can go to the next thing okay <clears throat> all right guys so it's the next following morning uh, basically we have done a lot of parts uh, so we have uh, screwed the back uh, shock tower and then the front we made um, this so we extended slightly a little bit longer than previous because due to the servo is slightly taller and the screws uh, is protruding at the bottom so I mean it's um, just a normal build and then we really include the front uh, front arm as well front arm like I said it's not so smooth because this ball end it's protruding the lower arms uh, ball uh, what I call ball cap so um, angle wise I did not follow the book I changed it a little bit uh, accordingly to my preference so I actually uh, get much more angle from here I will try to push up here maybe we need to change uh, this steering angle uh, to a Yokomo or either a ref D one a uh, ref D knuckle or either the ref D lower arm so and that's in the future for the customer so now uh, what we'll be doing is installing the rear um, knuckle and then uh, basically we are almost there and then we can do the dampers for the front and the rear and then basically we can start doing completing the chassis while installing the electronic parts as well so uh, wiring wise uh, nothing too much cleanup major I just want to tie it up right here and then that's basically it all right guys so we already installed uh, the rear uh, part it's not too difficult uh, just a little bit of adjustment and experience you basically can know how to click in the ball end I, uh, I use this to measure the length of the recommended in the book uh, but we will do some adjustment as well in the future uh, after the chassis has been completed so this one uh, we are using the caliper to I remember the word for it is a caliper uh, and to install all the way in alright guys so damper is finally installed the front one I use super soft they give the the what they call the coils are all the same same hardness but I use extra extra soft from the other coils that I used to have I used to buy it so I used to I just put it in front for the customer and hopefully he will uh, like the what they call the softness uh, a little bit confusing when it comes to this ball and uh, ball cap I don't know why it's not the it don't look the same as in the book because I follow accordingly to the instructions and left four of this so I don't know if is a flaw in producing or not but like I said guys it's almost completed so the front is ready done and now we are doing the rear the rear I didn't follow the instruction manual to put on the fourth I basically put it on the third so it's if it's too much on this side then the car will have too much stability we want it to have stability and increase of uh, traction when you launch so this is the best ideal position without further ado let me introduce the d5 to you the building process has been mm, quite simple um, you got your dampers you got your servo holder and then you got your uh, arm that connected to the top of your dampers 
a magnet they give you the magnet as well so you got two magnets actually uh, one on inside and then you just cover it just like so I'll just show it one more time like so and then you just uh, screw in from the top here and then just close it and you're done so for the battery fitting itself it's a slim battery fitting so for slim battery fitting it's a plus uh, for me uh, because slim battery uh, is now the new lightweight tram battery uh, of course you can use a thicker battery by increasing this uh, spacer so you can increase the spacer here and then after that you can make it high and then you can put in your bigger battery um, other than that uh, we will go for the rear so for the rear I already mounted the moto let me see all right so I have mounted the moto right here uh, the mount the moto it's not difficult to mount and then they give you a 25 uh, pinion size all right at the moto here so when uh, in total the car itself it's okay uh, it's okay for a budget car uh, the customer decided to go with the overdose model it's a 9.5 turn so this model give it a little bit much more power when it comes to uh, the moto turn itself it's 9.5 uh, I'm selling him at the same price as well 300 ringgit for the moto um, and then uh, I just put on the battery just to check if uh, the size of it is the larger type or the slimmer type and it's actually the slimmer type so it's okay uh, he also used a slim battery so there's no problem when it comes to a slimmer battery like I said guys just increase your spacer so you can mount the larger battery if you want to uh, for servo itself we did have a little bit modification here because the servo is quite tall uh, for ref D in the future, the customer wants to change to a ref D servo, you won't have any issue by just actually uh, taking this thing out and then just putting in the servo. Uh, for the parallel wise, uh, the kit itself comes with the instruction itself. Uh, it's not so smooth when it comes to the bearing, you can service the bearing uh, because the bearing you need to. Uh, resurface and then throw away all the grease and all that and then you can clean your bearing and then you'll make it much more smoother so for the angle itself I can change the arm here that connected to the knuckle uh, from Yokomo one so maybe we will try and change that uh, if you don't want it to touch and hit you need to use a bigger hex so it won't hit your uh, arm and also your link to the steering um, the spring itself, I have to change back to the original one. The softer one is just way too soft. And for the damper, you can actually get a better damper. So if let's say you use uh, another type of damper, uh, you can just uh, change uh, the holder for the damper and then just mount it on. Uh, I would suggest maybe you can use a much more better damper that's why the customer would upgrade in the future he will upgrade to a better dampers uh, that's what his plan is uh, for the dampers itself it's plastic so this is a basic um, what do you call this um, a budget chassis so uh, for electronic parts right now we will be putting on um, oops uh, this ESC right here. We'll be mounting the ESC right here uh, For gyro, it's already rich. I will review the gyro tomorrow as well as the remote that the customer buy uh, It's a budget remote as well uh, So the receiver will be going down here all the way down the deck and then the gyro will be down here uh, The book itself put it on top the reason why I don't put it on top because the gyro when you put the gyro on top the sensitivity is not so much accurate when you put it at the below because when you're drifting the deck is actually moving for the below deck so the upper deck is to give you a strong uh, wholeness and stiffness for the flex of your chassis so um, I do recommend if you guys get this budget kit and you guys don't have much uh, budget to spend uh, definitely put your gyro at below where the receiver is next to it and then uh, for I think basically it's all complete like like so and then we just need to 
review the remote the next video we'll be doing the remote uh, unboxing and of course the gyro unboxing as well and then we'll be installing by soldering the ESC and the motor we'll be soldering both of this like so we'll be soldering uh, this to the motor let me show you if the camera can catch it so we'll be soldering from the ESC to the motor right oh sorry the magnet the ESC to the motor right here um, he don't have any pin so we will direct solder uh, and then once this is already installed uh, basically we will be doing the run so this is a cheap budget series build uh, in the future he wants to upgrade this uh, lower arm to a ref D lower arm and then for the lower arm here we will try and see if he can enter the ref D one or not because the sus pin size is almost similar to the Yokomo one as for knuckle he's planning to upgrade this to the ref D knuckle as well uh, because the ref D knuckle does have KPI so that's why we do recommend you to change if you do have the budget uh, to change it's not very expensive for the knuckle it's approximately 157 ringgit point 50 cents so 157 uh, point 50 cents ringgit uh, to change the knuckle uh, very functional knuckle love that knuckle and uh, basically that's about it the kit is basically done uh, for the mounting position wise uh, for the height we for the body shell we still haven't actually uh, get to adjust yet because we haven't cut the body and then we have to send the body to spray so the body itself would be the Lamborghini the Lamborghini body so this is the Lamborghini body and the Lamborghini is going to go on top like so and basically it's the chassis is already done guys the chassis is all already done uh, I just have to do some couple of wirings uh, basically the wiring so we have to do it and then other than that it's already complete uh, it's using gear diff and then the back is using the gears like axle gears to actually run for with the spur and the pinion so overall we haven't tested up this chassis yet this will be the what episode number two of doing uh, this Sakura D5 alright guys so now the chassis is really complete he's using the Lamborghini um, by tree racing so what we got to do is we got to remeasure everything but due to this body uh, we have to cut it then only we can see where it is the mounting point uh, for the whole entire body basically we have a clear rough idea how we're gonna mount this uh, body so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, cut up the whole side of the edges uh, and uh, don't remove the uh, what they call the protective film from the outside and we are just going to from here we're just going to make a cut a clean cut and then we will rearrange how to mount the body then this body has to go to um, paint so this body is going to go get paint uh, doesn't come with any stickers sadly so we have to mask ourselves uh, how the tail lights the windows and all that kind of stuff so basically we are going to just readjust everything not drilling any holes just going to use fully magnet and then yeah okay guys so body shell is already done um, basically we have to cut it at the back all the way back then I use a filer <laughs> so I use a filer to actually uh, make it much more smooth but there's still a lot of touch up for me to be uh, doing this and complete it so uh, the main major of this is to get the body fit and then we add the uh, hex to make it slightly longer than previous so it looks okay so we'll go back to the front view Okay, make sure we align. Okay, so um, the car so far after cut, I still have to touch up a little bit, but look, there's no touching. 
and it's so far it looks okay in my book um, maybe we can add a little bit whiteness more uh, but I'm not too sure guys because if I add too much white it will be way too white because it's already white by itself already uh, for the chassis so uh, overall the kit works uh, like so and then tomorrow uh, after we done the review we will be actually painting this kit uh, so so far the body is like so it's a lamborghini body so without further ado guys i'm gonna sign out today and i hope you guys like episode number two uh on the budget drift build uh remember guys if you guys are brand new don't forget to click the subscribe button and like this video if you thought this video is very helpful plus turn on your notification post so you won't miss any new uploads like this kind of episode so if you guys really like this let me know in the comment section down below i would like to read your comments i will try to reply as much as possible or i'll put it in the next video so without further ado guys this is nicklin vlogs signing out i'll see you guys in the next episode peace out